Okay, we're following on from the last day level video on graph transformations. Well, we're looking at the order in which you should do them if there's multiple ones being put on at the same time. So, the key is you want to get yourself into this sort of form if you've got a combination of graph transformations, and this will become clearer when we give an example. But this horizontal shift comes first, okay. Then you do this uh, horizontal stretch second. Then we come out here and we do this third. And this is the final one. Or we'll just go with fourth. Okay, and included in that is. Um, if A is negative, remember to do the reflection as well. You can do that at the same time as you scale it in the y direction. Remembering that uh, X minus B moves moves the graph B units to the right. Okay, multiplying um, by this bracket of X added to some constant um, stretches X. Well, it stretches the graph in the x direction by 1 over c a stretches the graph in the y direction by a and d moves the graph vertically uh, by d units okay so if that's positive that's up by d units if that's negative that's down by d units all right so we're going to look at an example um say we have a function f of x is equal to x squared. Clearly a familiar function. Uh, we can draw it. Terrible drawing, but okay. So that's that graph there. Now we want to look at the graph of uh, well, let's put let's use g of x. G of x is equal to three x minus one squared plus four. First thing we're going to do to draw this graph is we're going to write it in terms of f of x. So first of all, what's our what are we do in our function? Well, f of x gives us x squared. We've got an x minus one squared here. So we're going to do f of x of and we want a x minus one in here but we also want we're being multiplied by something and the x minus 1 squared is multiplied by 3 but we, when we put all of this in it's going to square everything inside this bracket so we want to put root x okay so if we apply f of x uh, to this this x we get 3x minus 1 squared alright so to get g of x we still need to add on 4 okay now we're going to apply these transformations one by one and see what we get so first off like I said we're going to start in this middle and this is just going to shift the graph to the right by 1 so instead we get zero here. So that's x. This is f of x minus one. Okay, if we're writing it in terms of this, this x. Remember, our ultimate aims to get to g of x here. Next up, we come to this um, factor. 
and we are gonna it's hard to draw this without having some sort of scale on the graph but we've still got our same point but it's essentially it's going to stretch the graph by 1 over root 3 so that's going to bring everything in much tighter together okay so not a great drawing but it gets the point across and this is f of root 3 x minus 1 okay and now finally we want to draw f of root 3 uh, x minus 1 plus 4 so we take our previous graph we bump it up 4 units so we'll take each one of these as 2 units 1, 2 um, and draw the graph ok, they're supposed to be even these, it's a terrible drawing now we have g of x and x on the x-axis obviously now this uh, is how we draw g of x using the original graph f of x but we we could have just drawn g of x you know by just looking at g of x and we'll do that now to check that this order of doing graph transformations was correct well we're going to get because x squared is always positive and 3x squared is then always positive and 4 is always positive so g of x should always be positive uh, for y which it is for all values of x and the minimum then is going to be when this is equal to 0 which is at x equal 1 so that's the minimum that's our turning point and that should be 3 times 0 plus 4 it's at y equals 4 so this is looking good and then from my drawing you can't really get an idea of the scale the root 3 but it's, it's a little bit um, the two tails are close together than they would be for y equals f of x ok so hopefully this helps you get your head around um, the order of transformations uh, I would recommend doing some practice questions because there are a couple of little uh, tricks that you find when when you're working with these questions there's a couple of things that are common errors easy to trip up on and I think the best way to navigate that is just to um, consider a load of different functions and you'll start to see these things and be aware of it when you look up the solutions um, if you do have any questions or a specific function you want me to do the graph transformation of or whatever uh, let me know down in the comments if you did enjoy this video please be sure to like and subscribe and I hope to see you